some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. It was the final sermon by a minister whose message changed history. One day later, on April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated outside a motel in Memphis, Tennessee. Just 39 at the time of his death, King was the most prominent leader of the U.S. civil rights movement fighting for equality for black Americans. The son of a Baptist pastor, King grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, attended college at just 15, and went on to earn his doctorate in theology. He married Coretta Scott, an aspiring singer with whom he had four children. Racial segregation reigned in the South, and throughout the United States, black people faced routine discrimination. We have some dear white friends here who are with us, and we want to eat together. But because of this system, they would have to eat up front and we would have to eat in the back. We can't even communicate. Civil rights campaigners often endured brutal violence. Police used force to break up demonstrations. And King himself was targeted with death threats and his house was bombed. But King built his movement on a foundation of peaceful protest. He was inspired by the teachings of Indian independence leader Mahatma Gandhi and paid homage with a visit to his tomb in 1959. King's role in nonviolent protests and sit-ins landed him in jail multiple times and he was investigated by the FBI as a potential dangerous radical. He disobeyed the parade order. Each and every one in this line is under arrest for parading without a permit. The most famous action of the civil rights movement came in 1963. Some 250,000 demonstrators of all races joined the March on Washington to demand equal voting rights and economic justice. Well, I have a dream. King delivered the speech that would be remembered for generations. The march, and others like it, led to momentous change. President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, legislation that outlawed discrimination in access to schools, employment, and the polls. And in 1964, King was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. I accept this award on behalf of the civil rights movement which is moving with determination and a majestic scorn for risk and danger to establish a reign of freedom and a rule of justice. King's struggle was cut short 50 years ago by a sniper's bullet. His death was followed by a national day of mourning and a funeral procession in Atlanta attended by tens of thousands. The assassination set off angry riots in many U.S. cities. But it was King's message of equality and peace that would be his lasting legacy.